do high thyroid antibodies really matter? In this video, I'm going to be explaining what do those really mean, should you be worried about them, and what you should do about them if yours are high. All right, so thyroid antibodies. These are the tests that someone does to find out if you have Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition. It's the most common organ-specific autoimmune condition that we know about. So autoimmune means that your immune system is attacking you. So normally your immune system is patrolling your body looking for viruses and bacteria and stuff like that. And, and it tolerates your own healthy tissues. Now in autoimmunity or autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's, your immune system, it kind of, the taboo for self-tolerance has been broken. And so you start to make antibodies. So what is an antibody? I always tell uh, my patients that antibodies are like, you know, a, a post-it note that your immune system is making to stick onto something to monitor it, perhaps tag it for destruction. Now the thing to know is we all have a little bit of antibodies to a lot of our tissues floating around. It's how our immune system does uh, surveillance, right? But when you start to have like a whole pile of antibodies directed towards one thing, like your thyroid gland in this case, then that's abnormal. That is Hashimoto's. Now the question is in this video is, does it matter? Are, are high thyroid antibodies really a big deal? Well, they can be, and I'll explain why. So the way it works is, is if you do a thyroid antibody test, right, thyro thyroid peroxidase antibodies and or thyroglobulin antibodies, today we'll just talk about thyroid peroxidase. Uh, those antibodies, when they're high, it means your immune system is targeting your thyroid gland. And all things being equal, there's a high likelihood that eventually you're going to become overtly hypothyroid. So let me explain that. There's kind of a spectrum of how this works. So the first end of the spectrum is what we call euthyroid Hashimoto's, and that's spelled E-U-T-H-Y-R-I-D. That just means your, you have the antibodies, but your TSH and your T4 or your T3, the thyroid function tests, are normal. Okay. Now, here's the thing. There's a very good chance that over time, euthyroid Hashimoto's patients are going to become overtly hypothyroid, which means you're going to have, it's over the years if you don't do anything, enough destruction of your thyroid gland by your immune system that eventually your thyroid function tests are going to become abnormal. So the next stage in the spectrum here, uh, explaining why these matter, is what we call subclinical, and that's kind of a weird terminology, but what it means is, is you've got the antibodies, they're high, your TSH is high, but the T4 and or T3 are not uh, low, okay? And that's called subclinical. Now, a large number of people that have subclinical Hashimoto's are going to go on to develop overtly hypothyroid, low thyroid Hashimoto's if you don't do something, okay? Now, the final stage of the spectrum in explaining why these antibodies matter is what we call overt hypothyroid or hypothyroid or just Hashimoto's hypothyroid, there's a lot of different names for it. And that's when your thyroid antibodies are high, your TSH is elevated, and now your T4 or T3 are low. And usually the person that has that situation is going to have to take thyroid replacement hormones like levothyroxine or, or Synthroid because you just can't make enough thyroid hormones anymore. And of course there's a whole bunch of symptoms that come along through that spectrum. So things like weight, uh, weight gain, and hair loss, and anxiety, and depression, and brain fog, and sleep problems, and joint muscle pain. Those can start when you have euthyroid Hashimoto's. You don't have to be overtly hypothyroid to have those symptoms. Research is pretty clear that all you have to have is the antibodies to feel bad, because the antibodies being high is a warning sign. It's telling you your immune system is out of balance. And one of the big things we now know that you need to do to treat someone appropriately that has this is certainly you have to replace the hormones, that's fine. But you've also got to find out what their immunophenotype is. Now what that means is there's kind of advanced testing uh, called lymphocyte immunophenotyping. It's just dissecting your immune system and finding out what is your immune system fingerprint. Yeah, you have Hashimoto's, but your individual Hashimoto's, what's happening? Okay, so are high antibodies a big deal? Yeah, they are, because it's a warning sign that something's about to happen. Now. It may not ever happen, just to be you know, honest with you, but it can happen. So the other thing that makes these guys a big deal is the higher your antibodies are, the more cross-reaction can happen. So let me explain what that is. 
So cross-reaction is not a good thing. Cross-reaction occurs when the antibodies you make for one thing, in this case for thyroid, can stick onto other things that aren't the thyroid gland. And so you get an expansion of your autoimmune problem. And it's well documented in the research literature and even in my clinical practice that once you have one autoimmune condition, it is very likely you're going to get another one if you don't already have another one. So in thyroid patients, that could be rheumatoid arthritis is the next thing, a stomach autoimmune problem. It could be vitiligo. It could be, there's just a number of things that could happen. So the higher those antibodies are, the more that cross reaction can occur. So something has to be done, whether you're hypothyroid or not, if your antibodies are very high, then you gotta do something to lower those. And there are things that you can do to lower it, but only if your doctor knows what those are. <laughs> uh, so how high is high? Well, you know, there are lab ranges, right? And remember, that lab range is really kind of a, a statistical creation. There's a thing called a standard deviation that most uh, lab ranges are made up of. And it basically says, hey, what is, like if we take a thousand people and we all test their thyroid antibodies and, and none of them have Hashimoto's, right? Um, how, you know, what, what is 80%, what is like kind of what fits in that range? Well, anyway, I think Quest uses something like 30. But here's the thing, it does vary. Uh, some labs will say, uh, you know, nine in international units per milliliter uh, is high. There are no functional ranges. Now, a lot of people talk about functional and optimal. But here's the thing. If you're above that lab's range, it's too high. If you are borderline on that lab's range, it's too high. If you're like, you know, you have some detectable antibodies, but they're not above the range, I wouldn't worry about it just yet. Why? Because we all have some of these antibodies floating around. It's normal. But it's when you have a bunch of them that's the problem. So I'll give you my, uh, I, uh, what is really high, right? For my money, anything above, you know, 200, 300, 400, no matter what kind of scale is being used, that's very high. Uh, if you're, you know, 10 points over, that's not that high. But here's the thing. The level of antibodies doesn't always match up with how you feel. Now, I've had patients with antibodies that were sky high that really didn't feel that bad. And I've had other patients <laughs> whose antibodies were a little bit over and they felt like crap. Why is that? Well, because they all have their individual immuno phenotype. They all have their individual immune system fingerprint. They all have their own individual experiences. Some of these people uh, that have Hashimoto's have other things going on that are collateral damage from the Hashimoto's. Some people have other metabolic issues besides the Hashimoto's. They might have uh, prediabetes or blood sugar or all sorts of different nutrient and vitamin deficiencies or, or gut infections. So there isn't a blanket protocol for this, just so you guys know. And I, I, again, I always caution people against doing self-treatment because it is more complicated than you think. And people that are, you know, giving you books and courses, they got to dumb this stuff way down to make it as generic as possible. And yeah, you know, you might do okay, but it's better to be working with someone that understands all the stuff I've been talking about. So let me wrap this up for you. Are high thyroid antibodies uh, a big deal? Well, yeah, usually they are because at some point, like let's say like right now, you, know, you get your uh, antibodies checked. And here's the thing, most people aren't going to check your antibodies unless you already feel bad anyway. And if you get your antibodies checked and you're not overtly hypothyroid yet, there's a really good chance you're going to become at some point if you don't do anything about it. And I have some other videos on this as well. There are things you can do now to be proactive to modulate your immune system, try to put out the fires of autoimmunity as best you can. Waiting and doing nothing means you're very likely going to become hypothyroid. Now, one caveat to me talking about these antibody tests is in kids. Uh, sometimes in kids, you can see a transient elevation of antibodies that then normalizes and it's no big deal, nothing happens. However, I will tell you that if you are a parent that has Hashimoto's, you know you have it, uh, or your antibodies are high and you've got a kid and then their antibodies show up high, well, that may not be something to ignore because Hashimoto's is extremely heritable. It's a very genetic condition. So I have other videos on that. So here we go. Antibodies can be a big deal. Remember that spectrum we talked about, euthyroid, subclinical, overt. But remember this, there's things you can do now to prevent the progression, but you got to work with someone who knows what those things are. Okay, I'll see you next time.